in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear friends, you're very welcome to this Mass for the fourth Sunday of Lent, which is sometimes called Letare Sunday because of the first Latin word in the introit, Letare Jerusalem. Now, I've never owned a pink stole before, um, but um, Paul very kindly presented this very elegant stole, which is used twice a year, this Sunday and also the third Sunday in Advent, I think it is. Paul's our liturgical expert, and I always refer to him. Alessandro is here, safe and sound, and he will be directing during the Mass. Paul, of course, and Giselle, our loving couple, are here. And Cosmo, in his delightful outfit, is again on the drink, and he's been very quiet so far. But we'll see. Whoever you are, dear friends, wherever you are, and just to say as well, of course, in these aisles it is Mothering Sunday. So we send congratulations to all mothers and Eli's mum, and we offer this Mass for all mothers, those who have gone before us and those who are still among us. We ask the Lord to look upon each of us with kindness and mercy and to extend that look who all might especially need it at this time. We love you, Lord, because you have heard the cry of our appeal, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have turned your ear to us, Lord, in the day when we called upon you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. How gracious are you, Lord, and just. You have compassion. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten towards the solemn celebration to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. All the heads of the priesthood and the people too added infidelity to infidelity, copying all the shameful practices of the nations and defiling the temple that the Lord had consecrated for himself in Jerusalem. The Lord, the God of their ancestors, tirelessly sent them messenger after messenger, since he wished to spare his people and his house. But they ridiculed the messengers of God they despised his words, they laughed at his prophets, until at last the wrath of the Lord rose so high against the people that there was no further remedy. Their enemies burnt down the temple of God, demolished the walls of Jerusalem, set fire to all its palaces, and destroyed everything of value in it. The survivors were deported by Nebuchadnezzar to Babylon. They were to serve him and his sons until the kingdom of Persia came to power. This is how the word of the Lord was fulfilled that he spoke through Jeremiah. Until this land has enjoyed its Sabbath rest, until 70 years have gone by, it will keep Sabbath throughout the days of its desolation. And in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord that was spoken through Jeremiah, 
the Lord roused the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, to issue a proclamation and to have it publicly displayed throughout his kingdom. Thus speaks Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. He has ordered me to build him a temple in Jerusalem, in Judah. Whoever there is among you of his people, may his God be with him. Let him go up. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, O let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I ever, if I remember you not. O let let my tongue tongue cleave to my mouth, if if I I remember you you not. not. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat and wept, remembering Zion. On the poplars that grew there, we hung up our harps. O O let let my my tongue tongue cleave to my mouth, if I I remember remember you not. For it was there that they asked us, our captors, for songs our oppressors for joy. Sing to us, they said, one of Zion's songs. O let Lord, my tongue, tongue cleave, cleave to, to my mouth, mouth if, if I, I remember, remember you not. not. O how could we sing the song of the Lord on alien soil? If I forget you, Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. O, o let, let my tongue, tongue cleave to my mouth if I remember, remember you not. not. O let my tongue cleave to my mouth, if I remember you not. If I prize not Jerusalem above all my joys. O O let let my my tongue tongue cleave to my mouth, if if I remember remember you not. A reading from the letter of St Paul to the Ephesians. God loved us with so much love that he was generous with his mercy. When we were dead through our sins, he brought us to life with Christ. It is through grace that you have been saved and raised us up with him and gave us a place with him in heaven, in Christ Jesus. This was to show for all ages to come through his goodness towards us in Christ Jesus, how infinitely rich he is in grace because it is by his grace that you have been saved, through faith, not by anything of your own, but by a gift from God, not by anything that you have done, so that nobody can claim the credit. We are God's work of art, created in Christ Jesus to live the good life, as from the beginning he had meant us to live it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son. Everyone who believes in him has eternal life. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, The Son of Man must be lifted up as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Yes, God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. For God sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. No one who believes in him will be condemned, but whoever refuses to believe is condemned already because he has refused to believe in the name of God's only Son. On these grounds a sentence pronounced that though the light has come into the world, People have shown they prefer darkness to the light because their deeds were evil. And indeed, everybody who does wrong hates the light and avoids it for fear his actions should be exposed. But the one who lives by the truth comes out into the light 
so that it may be plainly seen that what they do is done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Nicodemus is one of John's wonderful characters in the pages of his Gospel. He's a member of the Jewish elite, but in spite of that, he seeks out the young prophet who comes from the hills of Galilee. But Nicodemus has his career. He's a diplomat. His career and his reputation to think about. There's nothing too daring about Nicodemus at this first meeting his caution on tiptoe. He wants to whisper safely in the dark without witnesses what concerns him. I always wonder if, if he told his wife that evening where he was going. And you can hear her say to him, Oh, Nicky dear, where are you going at this time of night? And all she hears is a door closing and footsteps disappearing into the dark. He leaves the city of Jerusalem behind him. He crosses the graveyard of the Kidron Valley. If you go to the Kidron Valley today, you can see some of the great monuments and tombs that Nicodemus would have seen. And he climbs out of the graveyard up the Mount of Olives where he finds Jesus. Nicodemus is polite, addressing Jesus as the teacher. Jesus seems, well, uninterested in polite exchanges and quickly gets to the heart of the matter. Jesus tells Nicodemus that the Son of Man must be raised up as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert. Nicodemus does not yet know that Jesus will be raised up, not on a podium for recognition and applause, but on the cross to shouts of mockery. And all this will be borne not for personal achievement or fame, but for love. Stubborn love ends up in very strange places. Stubborn love ends up enduring what most of us would gladly avoid. Jesus declares, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. If God's basic attitude to the world was divine contempt or icy detachment, then his presence certainly would be a torment. If God is greedy for anything, it is for people's acceptance of his love. There is a divine hunger for human love. That is why God sent his son. So there is a human hunger for divine love. That is why God sent his only son. In the person of Jesus, two hungers meet and two hungers are satisfied. The Gospel expresses the hope that if we really, if we really believe that God loves us, then we would surely emerge from our elected darkness. In the dark, it is difficult to see God. It's difficult to think about God. So we hug the dark and guess wildly. Perhaps we would come into the light more readily 
dear friends, if we believed that the light we were entering was not the cold light of condemnation. Thank you very much indeed, Cosmo. It's lovely to receive gifts during a homily. <laughs> if uh, some of us are afraid of the dark, all of us perhaps are afraid of the light. We're afraid of standing in a place that is overlit and exposed with no place to hide. But that's a dark image of God. God is not waiting outside the door of the dark, ready to humiliate us with the gift of his truth. Excuse me. The purpose of the light is to enlighten, not to blind and not to wound. God wants to relate to us in the light. We're not how told how Nicodemus reacts to his nighttime seminar, but we are told later in John's Gospel that Nicodemus turns up at the cross at midday surrounded by witnesses of what he's doing, to look up at the one who was lifted up. And he takes the broken body of Jesus down for burial. Now, there's nothing cautious about Jesus. Nothing cautious, rather, about Nicodemus. The cautious man has gone. The brave one stands in the full light of day beside the dead body of Jesus. There's something more important in his life than his own security and his own status. He's watched another man live out the consequences of love. The Jesus who once talked privately to Nicodemus in the cool of the night is now dead in the heat of the day in a public execution site. Now Nicodemus holds in his arms the truth he once heard that God loved the world so much that he risked his son amidst it's brutal violence. Dear friends, Nicodemus was lucky. He met someone who illustrated the truth that God's love abides forever. If there's one thing we all ache to experience in our lives, it is the love that can be depended on, the love that is not withdrawn when misfortune comes. The love that sees beyond our frailty and beyond our stupidity, because it never limits love to what it sees. After all, the second reading told us, we are God's work of art. Gosh created in Christ Jesus to live the good life as from the beginning he had meant us to live it. I don't know about you, but I guess most of us would have difficulty imagining ourselves as God's work of art. It takes a lot less effort to see ourselves as God's mobile mistake. As an old priest said to me, he said, I think God made me on the Sabbath. He should have been having a rest, really, at the time. That may be our image of ourselves, but there's no reason for ascribing the image to God. It is gospel that we were created in God's love 
and that we are God's work of art, we have to begin imagining, seeing ourselves as God sees us. Works of art, dear friends, should not be left to rot away in the dark, neglected and unseen. If they've been abandoned for a long time, as some works of art are, ah, they will need sensitive restoration and be brought back to life again. And Lent gives us the opportunity to think about the task of restoration and allow God to bring out the best in us. Like all restorers, God needs light to work by. We should trust his good intentions and come out where we can be seen. Who knows? We might even begin to value God's work ourselves. And if that happened, gosh, we might be able to see in other people God's work of art. Christ is given to the world by God the Father, so that those who believe in his name may be saved. He brings us new life because previously we were dead through sin, but now we are saved through grace. We pray for the Pope, all clergy and religious, that they may live by example the new life in Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for a speedy resolution to the war in Ukraine for a settlement which respects her sovereignty and borders, and that the conflict may not spread further. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all mothers on this Mothering Sunday and those expecting and trying to conceive. We pray that God may pour out his graces on them in their vocation of love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. Thank you for continuing to send in your prayer petitions. And I will read a few of them, two of them. Dear Father Dennis and lovely Mass team, warm greeting to all of you from Scotland. I've just finished looking at the Mass and was moved by the prayer for Father Dennis's sister Ellen. I was one of her many students at Glasgow University, so I studied under a wonderful, <coughs> committed lecturer. She was always ready to help us and had great patience with all her students. They will miss her terribly now away from the university as she rests and recuperates. Ellen told us all one day in class that when she goes to England, She's known as Father Dennis's sister. <laughs> when I go, or when Father Dennis goes up to Scotland, I'm known as Ellen's brother. That is true. A late thank you to you, Father Dennis, Alessandro, Giselle and Paul, and of course Cosmo, who continues to test the strength of everything he touches. Very well observed. <laughs> Dear Father Dennis and wonderful Mass team, a prayer, please, for Ukraine and Gaza, remembering especially all the innocent people who have suffered and died, and all the people now living in loss. We commend, as we always do, these prayers of thanksgiving, prayers of petition, prayers of lament. It's our privilege to read them and to recommend them to a loving Lord in the name of his beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
friends, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the his holy people. Amen. The praise and glory of God his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When, when we, we eat, eat this bread, bread and drink and this cup, we, we proclaim, proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Philip our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember the Redemptorist priest, Jack Clancy, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with his blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sins of the world. world. Have, Have mercy on us. us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you, you take, take away the sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Nicodemus by the English novelist and poet Mary Elizabeth Coleridge. With slow and stealthy steps he trod the darkening and deserted streets and no one in the market greets the man upon his way to God. By night he left the splendid home that sheltered many a sleeping guest. One and another lay at rest. The master of the house would roam. Was there a single soul that knew? No, for he feared the eye of scorn, the crooked laugh of anger born. Only the bats flew about him. The broidered borders of his gown he covered o'er, that none might see. Shall good come out of Galilee? They were the mock of all the town. But in this city named for peace, no peace his weary heart had known, and ever in the crowd alone he waged a war that would not cease. He came by night, and yet he came. And he that was himself the way shall own him in the judgment day and to the world confess his name. Let us pray. O God, who enlightens everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. May God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. We go glorifying the Lord by our life. Thanks be to God. And thank you for joining us and for those kind people who are really helping our charitable outreach here at Redemptors Publications. And as you can probably hear in the background, um, Cosmo is dismantling something else. God bless you and keep you.